What's up guys, Mason the Brock Henderson here, and this is Bull, Season 2, Episode 15, Witness for the Prosecution. So, this one was pretty interesting, in that it was a little bit different. Instead of the typical Bull episode where, you know, Bull and the team, they have to help out, you know, some lawyer, prosecute a case, you know, they work together, pick the jury, do all this stuff. It was much more focused around the psychological side of things. You know, Bull and his prowess when it comes to the psychological side of things. And I like that. You know, this is one of the things that I really do like in the show. It doesn't really get a whole lot of focus, and so the fact that we do get an episode where it is the main focus is pretty interesting. Um, we see this DA comes to Bull and is like, look, I need your help. Apparently there's this woman who kills a cop, and she's been running this drug criminal world forever, and they have, you know, all of this evidence that points to her but then every time they try to, <clears throat> her lawyer steps in and says, no, she's not mentally capable. She puts on this act of seemingly mentally insane. And then the judge is just like, let's throw the case out, send her to a mental institution. And then she gets out in a few months and continues to do what she does. So they need Bull's help to prove that she's not actually mentally insane. She believes it's all just an act. Um, and so it's on Bull and the team to try to figure out, you know, how do we prove this and if we can't prove that she is, let's find a connection. And so ultimately, that is what happens. You know, Bull talks to her, finds out she's not mentally insane. Um, they go and take it to court. And ultimately, they manage to find enough so that the jury is pretty much convinced, yes, yeah, she's not mentally insane, but it's not quite enough. He realizes they need to prove the connection between her and the police officer. And so they find that, and she puts on one final little episode she's like oh they want they don't want to take or they don't believe me they're all against me and then finally bull's just like all right give her something where she's if she's not crazy it'll put seizures upon her she's like okay fine fine i'm done done this is all an act it's all fake and so then she ends up in jail and woo, end of the episode so that's basically what happens in this episode it's pretty straightforward it's pretty you know by the books i would say so the story isn't really what's interesting about it. It really is just watching Bull kind of do the psychology side of it. I wish they had focused on that a little bit more because I feel like that side of it can be very interesting, you know, talking about, okay, well, you know, her micro expressions or, you know, talking about how she was supposed to act one way, but then she didn't or something along those lines. He did a couple times, you know, like whenever he got her really angry, he's like, well, if she was on those medications, she wouldn't be able to get angry with me. And so there are some psychological elements to it, but it doesn't feel like there's enough. On top of that, another problem I did have with it is the woman playing the crazy woman. Didn't do enough. <laughs> um, I really wish they had convinced me that she was very good at playing a crazy woman, but from the very first time I saw her, I was like, she's pretending to be crazy. You know, she's walking down the street talking to all these people like, you know, oh, don't touch my leg. Don't touch my leg. I don't want anybody to touch my leg. Did you see that? They tried to touch my leg. I can't believe. The problem with it is she's saying a lot of crazy stuff. She's talking to herself. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. In the, in the room with bulls, she's like, three blind mice, three blind mice, see how they run. It sounds crazy. And honestly, her voice sounds very crazy, too. That's not the problem. She doesn't look crazy. And one of the things that, you know, if you've known anybody that has some sort of mental illness or if you see somebody that's playing somebody on TV or movies that does a very good job of it, it's not just what they say. It's also, one, how they react to situations, and two, it's in the eyes. And the problem is she never really looked crazy in her eyes. You know, every time, I mean, she's walking down, she's looking at people. She's like, don't touch my leg. Don't touch my leg. I don't want anybody touching my leg. She's looking them right in the eyes, and there's no sort of craziness in her eyes. She's just saying a bunch of crazy stuff, and that's all, it's like, that's all it needs. And it, it doesn't, <laughs> it needs more than that, you know? So that is one big problem about it, because whenever I'm watching a show like this, and they're coming to me, you know, the DA comes to Bull and says, look, she's very good at playing crazy, and then I see her, and I'm like, even I can tell she's not crazy. It makes me wonder how she's been able to get away for the, with this for so long. You know, because it makes me feel like, oh, well, everybody in this TV world is stupid because I, on the outside of it, can see that she's not crazy. And everyone on the inside is like, oh, she is so, so good at playing crazy. I'm like, no, she's not. Yes, she is. She's very good. It's kind of a disconnect. So that was one of the problems I had with it. Um, 
if she had done more to like, you know, maybe go a bit more wide-eyed, like, don't touch my leg, don't touch my leg, maybe a bit more like cocking of the head instead of just walking normally. Um, if she'd just done more with her body and her face, I feel like it would have worked more instead of just saying a bunch of crazy stuff and thinking, oh, that's enough. Um, <clears throat> and then the other part of this episode is the team is talking a bit about Cable, and we do see that they are upset about her leaving, which makes sense. Uh, but the problem that I do have with it is is that Danny is being very like insubordinate towards Bull about this whole thing. Like She kind of blames Bull for this whole situation. Cable broke the law. <laughs> like, she broke federal law, and she went to prison for it, and she cost them a case. Yes, they managed to figure it all out in the end, and he gave her a chance to redeem herself, which she did, but there needs to be consequences for it, you know? And that's one of the problems I have with it, is that Danny's just like, oh, there should be no consequences, you know? Let's just forgive her. Let's bring her back to work, even though she broke the law. You know, why? She, she didn't react like a normal person whenever Bull told her she was fired. She was all, like, you know, angry and upset, even though it's her fault. Why, Bull? Why would you do this? It's your fault. So I, I'm just like, this is dumb. You know, like, she's very clearly upset with Bull when it's Cable's fault. Um, <clears throat> honestly, Chunk is acting much more like the reasonable person. He's like, you know, I wish we could have at least talked about it first. That makes sense. You know, Bull does something, even though he is the boss, he does something without consulting them and without at least, you know, maybe coming to them with a reason. Yeah, it is kind of like, you know, you could have talked with us about it first and let us know instead of just blindsiding us with it. Uh, and then Bull is on the opposite spectrum of Danny. He's being very, like, inconsiderate to their feelings. You know, he's just like, if anybody's going to talk about this, you're fired. I'm just like, great. So we got somebody on one side who's just being completely just insubordinate towards their boss, even though it's not the boss's fault. And then the boss is being so inconsiderate towards their feelings and how it hurts for them to lose it. Probably just hiding behind his own emotions of losing Cable, but, you know, this show is just so good about... I hate it whenever a show does this, you know? Like, whenever teammates are fighting because they're hiding their emotions from the rest of the teammates because they won't talk about their true feelings, it's just like, come on. <clears throat> but we do see Bull going to... Um, Cable going to her new job, and they're talking to her, she's just like, you know, oh, you're... You know, you look like you're completely qualified for this job. It looks like you're a shoe in Now we just need to do a background check. And Cable's just like, oh, shouldn't be a problem there. So either she's saying that with a bit of sarcasm, like, oh, shouldn't be a problem, even though the woman's about to see, oh, you broke the law. Or Cable's found some way to hack into her, like, social record and then delete what happened there. In which case, she has not learned her lesson at all, and I'm glad she's not on the team, <laughs> because... That's, once again, breaking the law. You know, it's good to do it for a good reason sometimes, and they do make that point. You know, she did it to try to help. Okay, fine. But it didn't help, and it's breaking a federal law. And now she's done it to better or to help herself for a very selfish reason, which tells me she didn't learn her lesson at all, and she doesn't deserve to be on the team, which just further proves my point against Danny, which is it's not Bull's fault. It's Cable being a total, complete, just sociopath about it, you know, completely uncaring about what it did to anybody else, so. With all that said, that's about all for this episode, so now on to the next one, see what they got in store. See you there. And now on to episode 16, Absolution. So this one was a very, very good episode. Um, surprisingly so, like, it really did, it hit home. Not necessarily because I've experienced going to jail wrongfully, but, I don't know, the emotion really packed a punch in this episode. It was really good. Uh, basically, the story is this guy meets this girl at a bar. You know, they hook up, and it seems like they hit it off really well. She gives him her number and, you know, make future plans. And then the next day, he gets called in. He just got a promotion. But these detectives come in and say, the girl that you saw last night is dead. They think it's him, and so they do everything they can to pretty much make him confess, you know, they just put him through all of this stuff, um, and practically just torture him, keep him there for hours, you know, all of the typical stuff, and then it ends, surprisingly so, with this one cop writing down his name and saying that he saw her before she died and she wrote his name down, and apparently that's legal, 
that's bizarre. <laughs> um, the fact that that is actually, I don't know if that's true in New York, if it's legal for cops to lie to get the confession, but yeah, I find that very odd. And especially just the fact that they were so focused on this guy. That is the one... Okay, well, there are two things that... Okay, this was a good episode, but there are three things that did stand out as not as good or weird. Um, this was the first one. Just the fact that these cops are so focused on this guy just because they saw him outside of the bar. It seemed a little strange to me. It seemed just... I don't know if most cops would be like that. You know, just, oh, this guy was talking to this girl. It's got to be him. He didn't even follow her home. But it's got to be him. Why? Um, and especially because he cooperated with them. You know, he gave them all this stuff. Why would a killer cooperate? You know, why would he Why would he help you so much? Why would he stay, not go get a lawyer? It's like they were just convinced it was him. He showed no signs of it being him. And yet they continued to think, oh yeah, it's definitely him. Let's just get a confession out of him. And... I don't know, it just seemed strange. But anyway, we see Bull years later. Apparently, this was the very first case he worked on, and he lost. Um, which I find very interesting, and I wish they had tackled that maybe a bit more, the aspect of it being his first case and his his loss. You know, I wish that we had gotten to see a bit more of that, but then they take time away from that and focus more on Chunk and his daughter. <laughs> um, second weird, this one wasn't that bad, it was just weird. Uh, we see Chunk trying to get a hold of his daughter. You know, obviously, the fact that she just found out that he's her dad, not her uncle, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, that's weird. Um, but what is very strange about this is he calls her trying to get in touch with her because apparently she's coming to New York to visit. Uh, and I, I think she's visiting one of the campuses that I think she's going to college at NYU, possibly. Um but he calls her and she doesn't answer and so it's like late at night and he's just like sitting there like you know what do I do I, I don't understand why she's not calling me you can see it written all over his face and then he goes to bed and all of a sudden he has a dream I'm just like what are we doing what is going on right now <laughs> why why are we in Trunk's dream next thing you know he starts singing <laughs> yeah it was bizarre um and it really just I don't know, it took time away from the rest of the episode. Uh, the only the only two things really connects. One, it does give him kind of a... He talks to the, the guy that's being accused, and he's talking about how, you know, the, guy, the guy's saying, I don't have anybody to support me. You know, my family, my sister, none of them wanted to talk to me. And so, but at the end of the episode, Chunk goes and finds his sister to sort of give him something to rely on. And it's like, you know, okay, the parallels between Chunk and his daughter and this guy and his sister. And then his daughter calls him at the end and says, you know, looking forward to, you know, seeing you. I just, I guess I'm a little bit mad, you know, missed all those birthdays, all those Christmases. Seems like a waste, you know. But she seems like she's excited to see him. So that's about all that happens in this episode. But like I said, I kind of wish we had gotten to focus more on what this case meant to Bull just because it was his first case and it ended up being a loss. We don't normally see a loss for him. So what did that first case, how did that affect him? You know, did it maybe put him off for a, a couple months? Like he started off, he was ready. He's like, this guy is definitely innocent. I can see it all over his face. You know, the cops obviously coerced, coerced a confession out of him. So clearly this is, this is an easy win case. And then they end up losing because you know, the evidence was enough to convince the jury. What could that have done to Bull at such a young age? You know, that loss, how did it affect him? We never really talk about any of that. And that's, honestly, it's a bit of a problem just because I feel like we don't really get to get a whole lot of backstory on some of these characters, you know. I, I wish we would start to learn a bit more why they are the way they are, you know, it would be very interesting to get to see that, and this was a very good prime opportunity to try to do that with Bull. And instead, they decided to say, "No, let's talk about Chunk and his daughter and what all that means." Why? <laughs> you know, it doesn't really tie in aside from the the sister bit, and that only lasted like what thirty seconds to a minute. So, anyway, but they're going through this case. The bite marks are pretty much the main focus. You know the. Apparently, bite mark science is sort of being shown to not 
be enough to prove anything. You know, it's kind of a junk science, uh, according to Bull. And so they take this back to court, and they're just like, you know, because of this, that means that one of the key pieces of evidence is out the window. You know, one of them was a coerced confession, which pretty much you could say is a terrible thing. Um, and then the other one was the DNA evidence, which obviously is there because he was with her outside of the bar, they kissed, so of course his DNA is on her. And so they feel like they've got enough to retry the case. Um, the judge is like, sure, I'll give you a retrial. And so they go through it all again. It seems like things aren't going right. The other thing, the last thing that I did have a bit of a problem with, his friend Josh gets up on stand. And he's talking, and it seems like he's willing to help. And then he says one little thing. It's a slip up. You know, he says... I wish I hadn't given him that, you know, I, I feel guilty for giving him the hydrocodone. I think it's, I can't remember what it's called. It's that stuff that Dennis used. Um, but, you know, he gave him some drugs, and he says, I wish I hadn't given to him. I feel guilty for giving it to him. And the ADA, of course, pounces all over that, like, what, are you saying you feel guilty because if you hadn't given it to him, you would have murdered him? Is that what you're trying to say? And just completely eats him up. And the guy's just like, no, I didn't say that at all. And ADA just shutting him down at every turn. The judge, for some reason, isn't hopping on that. You know, Benny hops on several times like, uh, no, he's clearly leading the witness, leading questions. And the judge doesn't really say anything, so it just keeps going, keeps going. They lose, you know, they're down to one juror that's on their side. And I'm just like, you know, it's disappointing. You know, it's, it's disappointing that because of that, he's now the killer. And that's immediately what I thought. You know, as soon as he said that, I'm just thinking to myself, you know, this is too predictable now. He gets up there, and he makes what looks like a mistake. You know, one simple little slip-up, I feel guilty for giving him that. It could have been as simple as, I feel guilty for giving him drugs, you know. It, it might not have led to him meeting the girl, and then, you know, him going through all of this. It could have been something as simple as just, I feel guilty for getting those drugs in the first place, because, you know, drugs are bad. I don't know, but because he says that, and because it's a slip-up, because the ADA jumps all over it, I'm thinking, let me guess, he did that on purpose, right? It wasn't just a slip-up, even though it clearly looks like one. He's actually guilty. Sure enough, that's what it turns out to be. And while the mystery has never really been a big part of this show, you know, it tends to be if there is a mystery of who the killer is, if there, if there is a murder in the first place, it's not really that great of a mystery, you know, there aren't, there aren't a whole lot of clues, they don't really like build it up like, okay, so let's try to solve this. It's more, we're focused on the trial and then right at the end they find some clues, it's like, oh, it's this guy. Because he's the only other suspect, it's him. You know, and that's immediately what I thought whenever Bull was talking to him and he's just like, you know, okay, you're going to take the stand, right? You're going to help us out, right? I'm just like, let me guess, he's not going to help them out because he's actually the killer. It's exactly what happened. So... I will say it was just a little too, like, predictable for the show. It would have been nice if they had actually found maybe some other guy who at the time was going around killing people or something. Maybe it was the other friend that wasn't really involved in this case at all. You know, this was just an honest mistake. But by the end of it, we do see that Bull questions him. And he's just like, you know, okay, yeah, you can't prove any of this. And then he eats some food, and that DNA that they get off of the food proves that it was his DNA on her shirt and that's ends up being what convicts him so yeah you know that's how they win the day uh, aside from that there are a few other scenes that I really wanted to talk about because they were really good first of all is Benny's scene when he's questioning the detective I just Bull even says it it's almost like the writers are just like you know this is an awesome scene we need to make sure people know this is an awesome scene by having Bull comment on how awesome it is because Benny is just questioning this detective, and he's just going at him, going at him. And I just, I don't know, I love Benny. He's really, he's shown what a good lawyer he is through all of this, you know, these two seasons so far. He's shown how good he is at just pushing the boundaries of what's possible, but also getting the truth out of people. I just love it because, you know, the detective even admits, he's just like, yeah, as soon as I saw that tape, I thought he was guilty. So, of course, I thought it was, because the DA was like, you know, there's no proof that the detective automatically thought that he was his man. And the detective's like, yeah, I did. It was totally, <laughs> just like, that completely blows their case wide open. You know, the fact that they did target this guy. 
And so then he just goes at the detective a little bit more. There are a few moments when he kind of like pushes the boundaries a little bit, objection, sustained, and so he has to take a step back and then come at it a different way. But I just, I love watching Benny work, and like I said, even Bull's just like, I love it when he does this, because he just really went at him hard one point, and, you know, got the DA to jump in, like, really hard, and just like, objection! And I don't know. Something about that side of the, the courtroom stuff. That part of it can get very exciting whenever things get very heated and, you know, Benny gets going and it's just like objections and overrules and sustains. It's just all over the place. Um, so, yeah, the questioning of the detective was a really good scene. But in my opinion, probably one of the best scenes in this episode was right after that. They're having a conversation with the DA and he's just like, you know, look, if you admit to being guilty, <clears throat> we'll get you out. You know, we'll, we'll cut you a deal. You can get out on service or something. I think it was like community service or something like that. And so basically he admits to being guilty and he's out of prison. And that's it. And of course, you know, Bull and Benny are looking at this saying, you know, wow, that's, that's a good deal. You know, yes, it does mean that the ADA is not convinced anymore and he doesn't feel sure, but we're not sure either. You know, we're not sure if the, the jury comes back as a hung jury there's a chance that you know, we have to go through all of this again. Yes, there's a chance we might get new evidence, but there's no guarantees there. We might have to go through all of this all over again. And you're not really sure if you want that. You know, this is a good deal. But the line he comes back with is just so good. And honestly, it's one of the best writing moments in the show. <laughs> and he just, it's very simple. He said, Look, this is a good deal. It's only a good deal if you're guilty. I'm just like, that is a very good point, you know? And that's not something they really focus on most of the time. They'll come back and say, you know, oh, this is a good deal, or oh, it's not really a good deal. It's a good deal, yeah, if you're a guilty person and you're getting away with it. He says that, and it's just so, it fit the moment so well. And it fit his character, too. You know, this is a guy who's been in prison for a crime he didn't commit. He's gone back and forth in his mind, did I actually commit the crime, did I not? Because... The cops pretty much had him convinced at one point that he might have done it, even you know, confessed to it. And so he's kind of just gone back and forth, just like, what is going on? You know, did I do this? Did the drugs, you know, alter my state of mind? What happened? And so ultimately he was just, he was sick of it. He was sick of the people looking at him saying, you know, looking at him like he's guilty. You know, that can really affect somebody. And so he was just tired of all the, the judgment and the blame, and he's just like, I'm done with that. I'm not guilty. I'm not taking the deal. I love that. I love it whenever there's a strong character moment like that, and they did a very good job of it there. And ultimately, you know, they do find that piece of evidence. It can be kind of considered a kind of a deus ex machina, like, oh, there just happened to be DNA on the shirt, and it just happened to belong to the killer. They even said at one point, it could be DNA from, you know, somebody she touched at the bar or somebody she touched on the train. You know, so there was no real proof it was the killer. And so you could look at that and say, oh, well, it's just all chance. But it's a TV show, you know, so I'm going to give it some liberties. Um, but I really, you know, I really enjoyed this episode. It was really good. It was really powerfully emotional at the end, too. Just seeing this guy get his life back, get to see his sister after all these years, and go back to his normal life. I love that. You know, I love it whenever... Something can make you feel good. So, all in all, it was really good. Um, they did mention Cable again. She didn't appear in this episode like she did the last one. Uh, but Danny's talking to Bull, and once again, just thankfully not being as insubordinate as she was last episode. You know, just like, I can't believe you did that, Bull. How could you do that? <laughs> you know, pretty much bitching about it. And this one, she was much more like, you know, yeah, we have this uh, piece of information. Normally, this is Cable's territory, but. Um, yeah, and the bull kind of comes back with his own snarky little comment, like, yeah, we did it before Cable, we can do it now, until a new Cable comes in, we've got it covered. So, still not really sure where that storyline's going, they're still just kind of dragging it out, not showing us anything to do with Cable. I feel like it may come into play near the end of the season, you know, like maybe for the season finale she'll be involved somehow. Um, but yeah, you know, another it's a good episode, it's continuing what in my opinion has been a Pretty solid season. There have been some ups and downs, but so far it's been really good. So looking forward to the next one. Hopefully you guys are too. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on these two episodes? Let me know what you can talk about and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for your bowl reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next one.
Peace out.